Russia has conducted a controversial missile test in space, with consequences for the International Space Station. Here's what you need to know. A Russian anti-satellite missile test blew up one of its own satellites on Monday, November 15th, according to the BBC, resulting in 1,500 pieces of trackable orbital debris and causing astronauts on the International Space Station to shelter in capsules for safety. Political reports that Russia did not warn the U.S. about the test in advance, and subsequently, the seven-member crew of the ISS, which included three Russian cosmonauts, was instructed to shelter inside the Soyuz and Dragon crew capsules for two hours, according to NASA. The space station is now passing through or near the debris cloud from Cosmos 1408 every 90 minutes, though there is no need to shelter beyond the second and third passes. More broadly, the BBC says space debris is a rapidly worsening situation, with roughly a million to 1 to 10 centimeter objects floating in uncontrolled orbit of Earth, and Time magazine pointing out that much of it is moving at over 17,000 miles per hour. Part of the explanation for this is that Russia is not the first country to shoot down a satellite in this way, with India, China, and the US also having done so previously. However, the BBC also points out that space junk is a much broader phenomenon, arising from 64 years of activity above our heads, and this was emphasized in May this year, when NASA released photos of a small hole that had been punched through the ISS's Canadarm2 robotic arm by an unknown piece of debris. NASA said the robotic arm worked normally despite the damage, but the ISS also had to perform emergency maneuvers three times in a year before that in order to avoid separate collisions, according to Science Alert. And unfortunately, while larger pieces of debris can be tracked to help with this process, millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. It is no surprise, then, that a variety of solutions are in the works. In March, the BBC reported on the launch of the world's first test satellite that uses magnets to gather up space junk. That test satellite is called ELSA-D, and it consists of two spacecraft, a 175kg chaser and a 17kg target. The chaser uses its sensors to find and chase down the target, latching onto it via a magnetic docking plate. It then releases the target for further capture experiments before ultimately grabbing it and dropping out of orbit to burn up in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, in 2019, the European Space Agency commissioned the world's first mission to capture a piece of space debris from Earth's orbit in 2025. The Swiss startup ClearSpace was awarded the contract for ClearSpace One, a spacecraft that will support four robotic arms for grabbing debris. According to the ESA, ClearSpace One will recover the Vespa, a secondary payload adapter. Once in position, ClearSpace One will utilize its quartet of arms to catch Vespa under the ESA supervision. After ClearSpace One captures the target, it will return to the Earth's atmosphere and burn up with the Vespa. Part of the problem these and other space junk grabbing projects will face, though, is simply that space junk is quite hard to find. It doesn't show up in most pictures, for instance, because whenever a spacecraft photographs the entire planet, the image is typically taken from thousands of kilometers away, and space debris isn't visible at this distance. The International Space Station is around 400 kilometers above the planet, but even at this range, space debris are often minuscule. One solution to that comes from China-based scientists who have developed a way to use laser telescopes and neural network analysis to locate space debris. According to a study in the Journal of Laser Applications, the team tested the method at the Beijing Fangshan Laser Range Telescope Station. Citing the team leader Ma Tianming, the American Institute of Physics says the technology allows laser scopes to detect reflected laser light from small space debris with greater accuracy than before. It can detect space junk with a cross-section of one square meter and a distance of 1,500 kilometers from Earth. RT reports that the Russian space agency is planning to get rid of space debris by shooting it with a laser cannon. Scientists have noted the increasing amount of space debris floating outside of Earth's atmosphere, most of which is the size of a marble, while around one-third of the debris is the size of a softball. The cannon will be based on the three-meter optical telescope, which is already being made. It will be designed to monitor space satellites and keep an eye out for potentially dangerous space debris. The optical telescope will eventually be transformed into a powerful laser cannon if things go according to plan. The laser cannon will be supplied with power from a type of solid base generator and will supposedly use a process called laser ablation to remove debris surrounding Earth's atmosphere. The energy of the laser would heat and pierce the object until it evaporates. RT reports different countries such as China, Australia, and Japan have tried their hand at getting rid of space debris without any success so far. It's about time we start cleaning up our space garbage. A spacecraft designed to collect space garbage 
made by several companies in conjunction with the European Space Agency, has arrived at the International Space Station. The removed debris satellite weighs 100 kilograms and is equipped with a 30 centimeter long harpoon that can be shot towards space debris in order to push it away from functioning satellites. It also has a net that can be launched towards objects. After wrapping around the debris, the net can then be cut loose to burn up while re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. After being deployed from the ISS, the satellite will first conduct preliminary tests with CubeSats acting as space fragments. Researchers are expected to start testing the spacecraft within the next few weeks. One man's space junk is another man's art project. Dutch artist Dan Rosengard has come up with two rough ideas to dispose of space waste, but his pictures are real pretty. The European Space Agency and Dutch Design Lab Studio Rosengard are collaborating to find sustainable methods to dispose of space waste. According to NASA, there are currently 500,000 pieces of space debris orbiting Earth at speeds of over 28,100 km per hour. One of the proposals is called Shooting Stars. This project aims to pull orbiting space debris back into Earth's atmosphere. As the objects re-enter, they would burst into flames, creating fake shooting stars or dancing lights similar to a fireworks show. The second concept proposed by the design lab consists of somehow creating sustainable 3D print buildings and structures using space junk. These would be used to develop living spaces for human colonies on the moon. Currently, the design lab is exhibiting the Space Waste Lab Performance, an outdoor artwork comprised of LED lights that track space waste traveling above Earth's atmosphere. This is also a result of the collaboration with the European Space Agency. Artists and scientists don't often mix, but ESA director Franco Ongaro thinks it's a better idea than most think, stating, this cooperation is all the more important when dealing with issues like space debris, which may one day impact our future and our ability to draw maximum benefits from space. Okay, sounds good, but will these ideas really get past the concept stage? Share your thoughts! Remnants of the Chinese Long March 5B rocket that was launched last month have crashed back down to Earth and into the Indian Ocean at a speed of around 4.8 miles per second, according to Reuters. On Sunday, Chinese state media, citing the China Manned Space Engineering Office, said the rocket debris had mostly burned up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. However, footage of the rocket's uncontrolled descent was recorded from Jordan, Oman, and Saudi Arabia, according to The Guardian. Corroborating those images, the monitoring service SpaceTrack, which uses U.S. military data, said the rocket was recorded above Saudi Arabia before falling into the Indian Ocean to the west of the Maldives. After days of speculation that the debris could hit land and endanger lives, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said in a statement on NASA's website, it is clear that China is failing to meet responsible standards regarding their space debris. Wang Wenbin, a spokesman for China's foreign ministry, dismissed concerns about the re-entry, saying it is common practice across the world for upper stages of rockets to burn up while re-entering the atmosphere. Emphasizing the lack of controlled outcome, Harvard-based astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell said the debris could have landed as far north as New York or as far south as southern Chile, according to The Guardian. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.